It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And now here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with our guest Arthur Treacher and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet to eat Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. What's the matter? You sound like you've got distemper. Huh? <laughs> you heard there was a big fight here last night? Duffy, it was nothing. All that happened was, you see, at 12 o'clock, I went up to suede Joe Hanson, and I told him to go home. Well, you know, Joe Hanson, he always gets cockeyed on one drink, usually the 17th. <laughs> I tell him to go home, so he turns to me, and he tells me to... Well, he made a suggestion. <laughs> so I politely tell him that if he don't leave the premises, I'll have him ejaculated. So he says, oh, yeah? So I says, oh, yeah. So he says, oh, yeah? So I says, oh, yeah. So he says, you and who else? So I says, me and nobody else. You know, that Joe Hansen don't scare me just because he has that wooden leg. <laughs> well, anyway, he unscrews his wooden leg, <clears throat> swings it at me, misses me, and hits Moriarty on the skull. So Moriarty, naturally thinking it was his wife who hits him, <laughs> he picks up a table and he belts her with it. Well, you know Mrs. Moriarty, she's the sensitive type, so she picks Moriarty up and flings him through the window. <laughs> well, while he's on his way through the window, Joe Hansen swipes his drink. Now, Cleary, who was also grabbing for the drink, accuses Joe Hansen of being a crook. See? And that's when the fight started. <laughs> Well, Duffy, don't blame these Donny Brooks on me. Just figure it out for yourself. Anybody will eat in a place like this is just naturally reckless. <laughs> well, look, I'll call you back. I gotta clean the place up in case of a counterattack. Yeah, okay. Hey, Yasha. Yasha Panyaslavnik. How do you do? <laughs> Look, Yasha, in that brawl we had here last night... Yes? How many people was malfeast? Oh, not many, Chief. After it was all over, I counted noses, and there was only six missing. Six people? No, noses. Uh, hello? Oh, hello, Callahan. Did we find your what? Uppers or lowers? <laughs> well, do you remember where you last had them? In Moriarty's leg, huh? <laughs> well, uh, maybe they'll turn up. We're still sifting the sawdust. <clears throat> okay, Callahan. Say, Archie, hmm? do you remember a customer here last night with thick brown wavy hair parted on the side? Why? Well, here's his hair. I found it behind the bar. <laughs> Scene. Hey, Miss Duffy, that's Schultz's toupee. <laughs> How do you know it's Schultz's? I can tell by that streak of gray. You know, Schultz worries a lot. <laughs> uh, by the way, Chief, huh? there's a letter here for you. A letter? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Looks like that battle last night had Grim Reaper concussions. <laughs> What do you mean? This letter is from the bank that rents us this building. They're sending a man down here tonight, and I'm afraid they ain't gonna give us a new lease for next year. Not gonna give us a new lease for next year? Why don't you outsmart him, Arch? Outsmart him? Yeah. How, Finnegan? Use the old lease for another year. <laughs> Look, this is no time for idosities. This is a serious thing. 
Might mean that Duffy's Tavern will be closed up. Uh, closed Duffy's Tavern? Yep. But Arch, they might as well take the lights out of Broadway. They might as well take the heart out of Texas. They might as well take the overalls out of Mrs. Mighty's chowder. Now, Finnegan, don't get over emotional. They might as well take the missus out of Mississippi. Finnegan. The trees out of Brooklyn. The gravel out of Gertie. Finnegan, calm yourself. But, Arch, what are you going to do if they close the place? What do you mean? You might have to go back to work. <laughs> Look, Finnegan, it ain't going to be that drastic. And if it is, so what? That's life. You've got to take the bitter with the sour. Excuse me. Huh? Are you the manager here? I am that home. And uh, who are you, pray, sir? I am the attorney from the bank. Oh, they sent an attorney, huh? Well, don't scare me none. I would like you to know, sir, that you are dealing with a fellow shyster. <laughs> this I can believe. Thank you. Now, to get down to business, as I have construed from your letter... Your bank is trying to get us to disvacuate, unfranchise, and otherwise dispremisate the said premises. <laughs> is that correct, sir? Well, that's the general idea. I see, and I suppose you realize, sir, that the law clearly states that the present status of the quo per lease per fiscal remains mandamus until you can prove a delectus necktie. <laughs> Now, look, Blackstone. Huh? <laughs> All I know is that we're not going to renew your lease. And for what modus operandi? For the, for the modus operandi that this place is a dive, that you're always having riots and fights, and that the place is a vastly disgrace to the neighborhood, if not to mankind. Come, come, sir. You're taking advantage of a very shabby loophole. <laughs> but assuming that what you say is correct, what's your solution? You can move someplace else. Move someplace else? But what would our customers do to regulars? Them fine, loyal, lovely people that have given us their support for years. They can find your new place. In their condition? <laughs> now, look, young man, I'm a human being. I don't like to be arbitrary, but anyway... Well, Archie. Oh, hello, Officer Clancy. I hear you had another Donnybrook here last night. An altercation? Oh, perish forbid, Officer Clancy. The boys was just playing a few friendly parlor games. What games? Oh, spin the bottle, uh, puss in the corner. Uh... I saw some of them pusses this morning. <laughs> now, Archie, I'm warning you. I don't want no more fights in me beat. I'm not getting any younger, and when I'm away from home, I want a little peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's enough for me. That settles it. Please, sir, give us one more chance. I guarantee you there won't be no more fights. If anybody so much as lifts his little finger in here, I'll, I'll crack him over the skull with a bung starter. <laughs> All right, we'll give you one more chance. If there's the slightest disturbance from now on, we're going to close the place. Okay, sir, and thank you very much for the reprisal. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Duffy. What? Well, I just got a new lease on life, and, and Duffy, I got an idea. Well, you know what? The Treacher's coming down here again tonight. And to give this joint some class, see, I'm figuring we'll hire him as a front man. What? Look, Duffy, maybe you think he's a bum, and maybe I think he's a bum, but the fact that he's British gives him class. <laughs> huh? Is his accent real? Look, Duffy, if he was any more British, he wouldn't be able to talk at all. <laughs> And with a high-class, dignified guy like him working here, it'd give us a tea room atmosphere, you know. Tea room, you know, where the palms is potted instead of the customers. <laughs> okay, I'll leave you know. Listen, Archie. Yeah, Miss Duffy. If you want to make this place high-class, what's wrong with making me the hostess? Well, nothing except what we're trying to do is make the place a little more refined. You mean to tell me that I ain't refined? You heard me. You ain't refined. I ain't refined. I ought to bust you in the snoot with a plate. <laughs> All right, so you're refined. Not only that, but there's something about me that when there's other people around me, they act refined, too. What do you mean? Many's the time some uncouth fellow will follow me on the street and whistle at me. But the minute I turn around, they look at me and say, Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Oh, 
Miss Duffy, will you keep out of me business here with all this talk, 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 Archie, talk? I'm an American citizen, and Patrick Henry fought to give me freedom of speech. Okay, so go talk to Patrick Henry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. The nerve of that jerk. Me, not refined. <laughs> Before we continue with the high class proceedings here at Duffy's Tavern, lend an ear to the well known team of Crosby and Hope. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that, too. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work with it. Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields, then open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up, and you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste are what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. Chesterfield, Chesterfield always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell, then you'll smoke them. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Such a funny joke a customer is just telling me. What's the joke? <laughs> this will kill cock robins. <laughs> What's the joke? You want to know? Yes, I want to know. Shall I tell her? <laughs> yes, you tell me. What's the joke? Well, one day a man goes into a butcher shop and asks for a job. So the butcher says, you want a job? So the man says, well, how much do you pay? So the butcher says, three dollars a week. So the man says, I'll take it. So the butcher says, can you dress a chicken? So the man says, dress a chicken on $3 a week. <laughs> gotcha. Who told you that crummy joke? The customer there in the corner. Say, Chief, I'm just thinking, maybe we could give him a job here telling jokes. Why? To stop the fights. You think telling jokes like that would stop fights? 
Most of course. It would keep the customers' minds off the food, anyway. <laughs> okay, call the guy over. <clears throat> that bank threatening to close this place, I want to try anything to stop the fights around here. Well, Chief, here he is. Happy Dan, the minstrel man. Hello, Happy. Glad to meet you, old pal. Yes, sir, glad to meet you. Let it rain, let it drizzle. Happy Dan will make things sizzle. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as the man said when he walked to the morgue, hello, everybody. Ah! <laughs> yes, sir, that's, that's a sample. And speaking of marriage, there's many a man who lives by the sweat of his frow. Ah! <laughs> hold it, Happy. Way... Joe Hanson, put down that wooden leg. <laughs> the other day, my brother in law happened to say to me, Happy, where were you born? I said, Texas. He said, What part? So I said, all of me! Ah -ha -ha -ha! Cut it out! Ah! Harrigan, put down that brick! Sorry, bud, you missed me. <laughs> Speaking of food, I was at my uncle's fruit farm last summer, and I said, what do you do with all the fruit you grow? And he said, we eat what we can, and what we can't, we can! Ah! Ha -ha! You get it? What we can't, we can't! Oh! Throw the bum out! Throw the bum out! Everybody can! Take to the hills! Quiet, everybody! You want to get the joint pinched? Archie, you took the words right out of me now, mouth. wait a minute, officer. Clancy. You heard what the bank man said. But look, Clancy... No alibis, Archie, and this is your last warning. If there's any more trouble, I'm going to dispossess you for the bank, arrest you for the police, and belt you one for myself. And that's final. Goodbye. Hey, Chief, ain't that Arthur Treacher coming in? Oh, 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 I say, oh, I say, really. Forgive me, oh, oh I say, but I really, I can't control myself. Oh, 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 yes, oh, dear, oh, buddy. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, it must be a good joke. Oh, 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 Tell me, uh, uh, what is oh, the... What about a holy trip? It's a joke I just heard. I was going home when I was coming in here. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. You know what it is? It's all big, buddy. You'll love it. You'll definitely love it. We eat what we can and what we can't. Oh, oh, oh it's all big. Oh. Now, listen, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, sh wait a minute. Oh, you'll die laughing yet. What we can't, we put up in tins. Oh, oh, oh. So you like that joke, Oh, too, yes, huh? Archie, yes. I find your American humor simply riotous. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad to see you again. You know, you was just here last week, and it ain't often that a guest repeats on us so soon. <laughs> yes, I suppose it does seem rather odd, revisiting a filthy hole like this. <laughs> but you see, I am a criminal. A criminal? Yes. I am a criminal returning to the scene of the grime. <laughs> You see, crime, grime. Get it? Oh, it's awfully good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I got it, but it's too hot to handle. I got it. <laughs> Look, Treacher, no intense offended, but I think I like you better when you sneer. Well, that's jolly decent of you, old man. One might say that I built my sneer into a career. Oh, I say that's awfully good. Uh, one might, but leave us let one not, huh? <laughs> Now, I'm glad you came down, Arthur, though. You see, I've got a proposition for you. Just and... a second, old boy. Isn't that Mr. Duffy over there? Duffy where? Oh, no, of course not. It's the moose head. <laughs> what made you think it was Duffy? Well, it was such a stupid-looking moose. <laughs> I see your point, but confidentially, Duffy ain't got no antlers. <laughs> now, like I was saying... Mr. Treacher, uh, would you please decide an argument between Archie and me? Now, you see, the question is... Miss Duffy, please. You keep your big fat yap out of this. <laughs> the question is, am I or ain't I refined? Well, old girl, it's hard to say. I haven't had that question put to me since the Duchess of Kent slapped me over the head with a wet salmon. <laughs> Mr. Treacher, are you inferring that I am or I ain't refined? He's inferring that you're a wet salmon. <laughs> Now start swimming upstream and get out of here. Now look, Arthur, what I started to say was we want to class up this joint, and I figured with a dignified stuffed shirt like you, uh, acting as a front man... Now, just a second, old boy. You want me to be the boniface of this 
costermonger's caravansary? Vaguely, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point, yeah. And with you here as the head costermonger, it won't have to be such a can veracity thing, you know? Uh, so what do you say? We'll pay you three bob and tuppence per fortnight, and uh, we'll guarantee you absolute authority. You're the complete boss of the pub. I'd be the boss? Absolutely. You can kick the rest of us around all you want. The situation is beginning to sound very intriguing. Thank you. When do we start? Anytime you want. Very well. Turn around. Preacher. <laughs> Cut out the jokes and get to work, will you? Very well. Now, first, I would like to meet my staff. The staff? Oh, very well. Hey, staff. How do you do? But, Archie, where are the waiters and the busboys? How do you do? Well, what about the scullery maids and the wine stewards? How do you do? Well, we'll do the best with what we have. How do you do? Hmm. Now, the first thing I will require is that we place clean tablecloths on the tables. Clean tablecloths? Preacher, this is only March. Archie, I have complete authority. No. Now, no. now, you young lady. Me? Yes, if you're going to work here, you will please stop chewing gum. Why? Because it ain't refined. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. My mother always says the same thing. What? Mother always says, Miss Duffy, she says, stop chewing. You're not a cow. Well, all I can say is, stop chewing. <laughs> Archie? Yeah? Get a pail and mop. A pail and a mop? Yes, and uh, scrub the floor. Me scrub the floor? Holy cow, I'm afraid I've created a frankenfutter. <laughs> but Arthur, it shall be done. Can you, Slavnik? Yes? Get a broom and sweep those cobwebs off the ceiling. Sweep the cobwebs off the ceiling? Yes. Who goes near the ceiling? <laughs> The next time you suffer from pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anison at any drug counter. Mm, that treats it away. He's kicking us around. We'd be better off if the bank dispossessed us. Attention, everyone. Yes, 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 yes the, the, the Duffy's Tavern Improvement Class will now come to order. Class? You mean we're going back to school? Precisely. I am the teacher, and you are the pupils. Now, I notice that the spelling on the menus is atrocious. Archie, how do you spell filet mignon? Simple. Uh, F-I-L-L-Y. F-I-L-L-Y, that's a horse. At, at Duffy Stavin, you take what you can get. <laughs> Next question, please. How do you spell hors d'oeuvre? What's that? Hors d'oeuvre. Arch, I think that them horses do be. Oh, well, that's the same thing. F I L L Y. <laughs> no, Archie. That's a different kind of a horse. Oh, let me see. Hard times. Yeah, I'd like to take a belt at that one. Very well, Finnegan. Horses doobers. H O R S D O E U V R E S. Correct! Finnegan, how did you know? I didn't. I just took a wild guess. <laughs> Teacher's pet. What was that? 
teacher's pet. Thank you, I'd love to. <laughs> Just up here in school, not in the Bejo balcony. <laughs> Proceed ahead, Mr. Treacher. Our next subject is etiquette. What's that, Arch? Etiquette? That's uh, manners, like not biting your toenails in public. <laughs> What's the question on etiquette, Mr. Treacher? Well, when you make change for a customer, what do you say to him? Well, me, I always say, uh, hey, look at that sign across the street. And when he turns around, I shortchange him. <laughs> and what about you, Miss Duffy? Oh, I'd love to. And what about you? <laughs> I'm asking a question. When you're making change for a customer, what do you say to him? Oh, I say... Thank you very much, sir. Why don't you call again real soon? Miss Duffy, we are making change, not the customer. <laughs> now, yes, our Tanya Slovnik. How do you do? When a customer gives you a tip, what is your response? When a customer gives me a tip, I am bowing my head and saying, New here, ain't you? <laughs> Just a second now, Treacher. You're supposed to be the front man here. Now, let us ask you a question. Uh, what would you do, for instance, if a uh, high-class customer like Machine Gun Van Smythe or Deems Taylor walked in? Uh, how would you greet him? Well, I think it would be appropriate to tell Mr. Taylor that I admired his commentary on Beethoven's fifth. Beethoven's fifth what? His fifth wife, you jerk. <laughs> you are thinking of Henry VIII. That's a symphony. Okay, so it's a symphony. What's that got to do with Deems Taylor? Which Deems Taylor? The fifth or the eighth? It's <laughs> Beethoven's eighth. Please, please. The class will come to order. Hey, teacher, I just made up a poem. What's the poem? Swimming in the river, rowing in a boat. We got a teacher that's a skinny old goat. <laughs> Finnegan, I heard that. Archie, hand me that bung starter. What are you going to do? You'll see. Hold still, Finnegan. Oh! Hey, Trichik, watch out with that bung starter. And here's one for you, Panya Slavnik. Ouch! Who oh, I say, that was a jolly one. Trichik, what's the matter with you? What's got into you? Jan, Joe Hanson, put down that wooden leg. Harrigan, put down that chair. Hey, Kelly, put down that beer bottle. What goes on here? Officer Clancy, you stay out of this. Archie, I warned you about these fights, and this is the last time that I... Oh! oh. oh. Uh, he's out. Oh, it's a very quiet night here, Duffy. Uh, what are you doing tonight? Going to the movies, huh? Well, uh, Duffy, if you're on your way to the movies and you pass a balloon with a for rent sign, grab it. Quick! <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. Inch for inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. Yes, a great many families have taken this advice to heart and bought the thrilling RCA Victor 19-inch, truly the most exciting buy in television. When you buy television, remember that the set you choose will be the very hub of your home for years to come. So select the screen size you'll really want most. The bigger and better RCA Victor 19-inch pictures are the just right size for family viewing. Big enough to watch from across the room, and yet so clear and sharp, you can sit up close. That's RCA Victor's million-proof quality for you. Quality proven in over two million homes. Your dealer can show you RCA Victor 19-inch television in a table model, a console floor model, or a combination television radio phonograph. See them, learn why, inch for inch, your best buy in television is RCA Victor 19-inch. Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The best cigarette for you to smoke. By the makers of Anison for fast relief, 
from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival.